Hey, thanks for stopping by. Here for another short review. This time we're going to look at the Tom and Tool 16-year, um, and this is a space side. And this is also 40% ABV, a little bit on the low side. But we'll see what we could do here. Uh, it's an ex-bourbon cask, all 16 years supposedly in the uh, ex-bourbon casks. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this is... Uh, I'm pretty sure it has coloring and chill filtering, uh, even though it's not prominently on the package um, that it does have it. If you don't see it, typically that means, and you can see by the color, I mean, even for a 16 year, it's uh, fairly dark, but let's go in. It's all really about the taste and the smell. <laughs> it's got a nice lemon, uh, lemon custard. Coconut and vanilla, too. There's some light floral notes in there, some pineapple. Huh. And at the very, very end is some melon. Not, I wouldn't say watermelon, but more of like a cantaloupe type melon. Maybe some honeydew, too. Huh. Not bad for the nose. It's funny for there's two issues. Well, I mean, there's one bad thing and there's one good thing. Wow. For 40 percent, this drinks extremely uh, on the, the heavier side. I'm surprised if you blind tested me with this. I would probably guess this is being a 46 percent on the ABV. With that said, it has some some notes on the palate, but it tastes younger than it you would think. Maybe around a. 14, 13 year, it's not as well complex, but we'll get to that in a second. Wow, it's, it's, so there's a lot going on. There's butterscotch. Like I said, it's a medium mouth coat. Um, there's some orange rind in the back end. Sugar cookie up front. It's a nice oomph. White pepper right before the finish. Hmm. It's subtle in the finish. There's a slight uh, cinnamon nutmeg spiciness going on still with a little bit of a hint of mineral minerality, some mineral notes, but not, not bad. It's a little bit of a bitter tone to give it some balance with all the sweetness going on. And at the very end of that, there's some spearmint, which is nice, actually. Then a little bit of a nice waxiness. Um, it's not near like Kleinleash level waxiness, but it, it does have those heavier characteristics of, uh, of a whiskey. It's funny, it says Speyside, but it's actually a Highland. I mean, it's, it says Speyside, but it tastes like a Highland, which is really strange to me. Um, it's almost like if the Dalmany 15 had a boatload of fruit in it. This is a fruit bomb, basically, I would say. Um, some slight oakiness on the very last part of the finish. Um, not bad. It doesn't blow my socks off. It is slightly better than an average whiskey. Um, I, I don't factor price in typically. It's 3.5 out of 5, 0.25 increments before value. If you're going to think about value, this is a very well priced dram for 16 years. It's only 70 bucks typically. Um, with that in mind, if I did factor value in, I would get a bit of 3.75, but 3.5 if I'm just going, you know, across the board. Uh, one little interesting tidbit on the end of this is I noticed that uh, on the bottle it says Tom and Tool 16, but it also says Glen Livet, which really threw me for a loop, a curveball. And um, I did notice there are still four distilleries that are legally allowed to put the Glenlivet name besides Glenlivet, which is usually the Glenlivet, on the bottle. And that's uh, Tom the Villain, Glenmora, Spayburn, and Tom and Toll. Uh, ironically, you don't really, on the, I've got a Glenmora 18 back here. You don't see the name on the bottle. Um, you don't see it on the Spayburns, I believe, not not prominently as much as you see this one. I uh, haven't seen a Tom the Villain bottle in a while, but I don't think you see it there either. It's kind of an interesting little twist, but. It's, it's I definitely uh, think it's uh, worth your while. Let's have a little bit. I don't have my uh, my dropper, but I'm going to do a little bit of a baby minuscule drop here. 
just to, and I'm being extremely careful not to uh, go crazy. I promise it's less than a spoon, just to see if there's anything extra going on. Hmm. I think it brought mint out on the nose this time. A little bit of a mineral note on the nose too. Hmm. It's not bad. There's still fruit there, so it's still well balanced. It's a little different, but I'm not getting any other characteristics from it. It does seem fresher, if that makes any sense, on the nose. It's a little more... Maybe the florals are coming in, too. And I let it sit out for 16 minutes before I had a taste. I usually do that per year on the uh, on the oxidation, just letting it, you know, open up. Mm. Still a great taste on the palate. A little more savory on the palate, not as much fruit. It goes toward the spice slash oaks and kind of gives it a little bit of a, almost like a milk chocolate flavor. That's interesting. That's not bad. Um, it does take the rind, the marmalade factor out of the fruit on the finish, which is nice. It's not as, it, it's funny. It shifts all the, the mineral notes I was getting on the finish up toward the nose and it's dropped everything down on with the water on the, uh, on the palate, it's it's uh, more fruit, savory, stone fruitish um, on the palate this time, but the the finish is not uh, not really changed at all. It's still got the same exact notes as before. So, like I said, not an overly complex, but I'm gonna stick with my three point five. I think it is slightly better than an average uh, dram, um, and I've had hundreds of distilleries, so. Um, this is, uh, I think, definitely worth a look at. The, the packaging is a bit dated. It does look like it still, you know, just came out in like 1992. But with that said, um, maybe, uh, you know, it still might be worth uh, your time if you are into space size or highlands. Well, thanks so much for stepping uh, by. We're going to do a new uh, discussion video here in a second. And I hope to see you there. Uh, Salon Javah for now.